Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. a lifetime of three score years and ten. Civilization has created science which can add considerably to that expectation. Civilization has also created an entire witch's brew of sicknesses and psychoses which can dramatically shorten our existence. The whole business has always been a two-edged sword. One side of the blade kills, the other cures. But you cannot condemn that young woman to death. I cannot. Hmm. Why? Because well, she's the victim, the weak, defenseless victim. And what of it? But it's against the law. My dear, the supreme law is the law of nature. And the law of nature always condemns the weak and defenseless to death. Doesn't it? Our mystery drama, The Guy de Maupassant Murders, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn and Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Exlax. I'll be back shortly with Act One. So much of life is a gamble. Our fate is always in the hands of complete strangers. The drunken driver, the impersonal sniper. Each of us who lives in the midst of human society is, in effect, hostage to fortune. Only our maker has the supreme power to create. But anyone, everyone, here below, has a terrible ability to destroy. It is late at night, and while the street is fairly well lighted, it is nevertheless deserted. On the corner, we have a bus stop, and one of those telephone stands, you know, where the phone is out in the open. A young lady is nervously depositing a coin in the slot, and now she begins to dial. I think it's one for two. One, four, three, four. Four. Oh, hurry, hurry, please. Please, answer quickly, please. Police. This is a special number for that killer, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any word about... I think I'm being followed. Where are you, quickly? Maybe it's my imagination. Lady, where are you? I'm a... No, it's not my imagination. Where are you? Jerry, get a trace. Oh, ma'am, he's coming toward me. Run, (laughs) yell for help. Oh, yes, Judge. 
and all with a bullet from the same twenty-two caliber weapon. A young woman named Cora May Prentice, it says. Age 30. Age 30. What a waste. What a waste. Mm. Happened at Fifth and Ballard. She was waiting for a bus, and she saw a man approach. There was a phone booth at the corner, and she was able to dial the police. Could she uh, tell them anything? Oh, poor woman. She was paralyzed with fear. I can imagine. And she managed to say he was big, black raincoat, black mustache. That's all? Yeah, except for the usual little note placed on the victim's chest with just the words, Thou shalt kill. Uh, let me look at that newspaper for a moment, if you please. Oh, sir, your coffee's getting cold. Um, where do they describe the killer? Oh, yes, yeah. Big, black raincoat, black mustache. <laughs> Why, bless my soul. The woman could be describing me. Oh, Judge. I'm six feet three inches tall. Oh, Judge, you have a great sense of humor. <laughs> I weigh 230 pounds. Uh... I'm under a strain. I'm on a starvation diet. Oh, 2,500 calories a day hardly comes under the heading of a... And I have a black mustache. Judge Wilmot, I hardly think... I but... also wear a black trench coat. Rain or shine. Well, Judge, what are you going to do? Turn yourself in. Confess. Poor girl. Yeah. All five of them. Poor girls. Will they ever catch this killer, Judge? Uh, eventually. But how? Well, you see, if he were to stop now... Yes. I suppose he'd be home free. What do you mean? Well, there are, there are no real leads, no hard evidence. If he got rid of that twenty-two caliber revolver, the one that fired all those fatal bullets, how could he ever be brought to book? But do you think that will happen? No, Mrs. Mullins, he's, uh... He's under some compulsion. Keeps driving him. What sort of compulsion? Oh, he may not even know himself. Well, do you think he knows what he's doing? Ah, uh, that's a complex question. He may know what he's doing while he's doing it, but uh, after he's done it, he may not know that he did it. Mm. Then are you saying that this man might be leading two separate, unconnected lives? Yes. And while he's... In one life, he's not aware of the other? It's possible. Well, then how will he ever be caught? Well, that's a problem for the police. Oh, it's a problem for everybody who walks the street at night. And if he chooses his victims, seemingly at random, in more or less deserted places, it does become a serious situation. But he'll be caught. How? Oh, he'll give himself away. You mean confess? The killer has a problem of vanity. He's the center of so much attention, the focus of so much activity. He wants to take a bow. All this fame is something he wants to enjoy. He'll, f he'll find a strange way to make sure he's caught. But how will he do it? Oh, he'll drop clues deliberately. He, he already has. He has? What are they? The little note he leaves with each victim. Uh, thou shalt kill. Yeah, there's a, there's a meaning in it somewhere. Well, I believe he has monopolized enough of our morning. I must be off. Oh, you haven't finished breakfast. I am not hungry. <laughs> well, will we be going up to the summer house this weekend? Oh, yes. Uh, I know I'll have an opinion to write. I find inspiration in the pure air of the country. When Fred gets here, what shall I tell him to bring up? Whatever supplies you may require of the kitchen. <laughs> My fishing gear, naturally. Oh, and uh, have them stop off at Simmons Hardware and get me a box of 22 caliber cartridges. I may want to do some target shooting. Didn't he buy you a box of those 22 cartridges just a couple of weeks ago? Uh, he may have. I just don't know where they all go. Another of your dietetic masterpieces, Mrs. Mullins. You call it what you like. It's keeping you alive. Ah, but is life worth living under uh, these circumstances? Well, as, as some gentlemen or others said, think of the alternative. <laughs> uh, 
Now just get up from the table right now and stop thinking about food. Yeah, all I can really do is to think about it. I get so very little of it. <laughs> uh, where's Fred? He had to go back to the city. He'll be here in the morning. He'd better be. I want to take the boat out. Now this would be a good time to sit down and start writing your opinion. Uh, now you're to quit hectoring me, Mrs. Mullins. Hector. My, my. I thought that word went out of style 40 years ago. It may have. They haven't replaced it with anything better. Oh. I can tell by the mood you're in that you've decided against the defendant. Poor fellow. No, Mrs. Mullins, you know I never discuss my cases. That's not true, Judge. You do it all the time. How can you say that? In your own way. I think I'll go out for a walk. Judge Wilmot. Ah, Dorcas, how are you? Just fine, Judge. I never did get a chance to thank you. Uh, for what? Now, don't pretend you don't know for what. I'm so grateful. Oh, it was nothing, really. It was everything, Judge. When George died, I, I didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to keep the store. But thanks to you, I got the post office. Well, I'm really happy things are working out for you, Dorcas. Yeah. You know, Judge, I, I gave up the car. It's only a half mile from the post office to my house. A, a half mile walk along this deserted road at night. It doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't. <laughs> Not up here. Now, a couple of minutes ago, I saw you coming towards me. I didn't know it was you, but it was the figure of a man. I couldn't make out exactly who it was in the distance, but I wasn't the least little bit scared. In the city, I'd have been frightened out of my wits. That's the difference. Yes, yes. That's the difference. But I often stop to think, what is the difference exactly? Is it that we have more respect for the law out here? The, the, the law? Yes, Judge, the law. You seem to be interested in the law, Dorcas. Yes, sir. If my folks had any money, I believe I'd have gone to law school. I, I, I always wanted to be a lawyer. The law fascinates me. Uh, the law. Judge? Judge, is, is something wrong? The law. Uh, what do you know about it? Judge, are, are you all right? Uh, you, you look a little sick. Do you know what the law commands us to do? Uh, 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 judge, uh, if, if I don't get going, uh, the kids will start to worry about me. The law of nature. It can be expressed in one word. Kill. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I never looked at it that way. You have a right. A, a, a right? What kind of a right? The right to know. The right to know what? The right to know why I'd have to kill you. Judge, what, what were you saying? To kill is the law. The law of nature. Uh, uh, judge, I, I... To kill is nature's law. Uh, look, Judge, I... We obey her. We are the children of nature. Uh, please, her word is our command. Let go of my arm. You have children. I, I, you insist they obey you. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah, Judge. Uh, yes, yeah, that, that, that's why I have to get home. They must obey you because you know best. <laughs> And her command is kill. Uh, you wouldn't. You're, you're, you're not going to shoot me. Nature commands it. It is I. You're allowed to have one cup of coffee, no cream or sugar. How unspeakably generous of you, madam. <laughs> Did you have a nice walk? Oh, yes. Anything happen? Uh, what could happen? What could happen? 
If anything, our story proves that we live in a world of infinite possibilities. Are there any more surprises? Can there be surprises in a world that has seen just about every barrier to belief broken and shattered? Well, we've given you the murderer in Act One, but don't think you aren't in for some surprises when I return with Act Two. Nutritionists tell us we are what we eat. Psychiatrists tell us we are what we hate. Therefore, it is reasonable to assume, A, that secretly we ourselves want to do those very things that we condemn in others, stealing, killing, and so on. Or, B, that we eat things that we don't like, which means that most people are either frustrated or suffer from indigestion, or both. Judge, may I present my brother, Lieutenant John Altman of the city police? How do you do, Lieutenant? Judge. Have you had your breakfast? Well, join us. I uh, hope you're not hungry. Oh, Judge. Uh, nasty, nasty situation, I understand, Lieutenant. Well, it's the killer. Does that mean he's up here now, too? I'm in charge of the investigation back in town. This thing happened last night. And they asked me to come up and see if there's a connection. Is there, Lieutenant? There has to be. He left that same little note. Thou shalt kill. And we've just got the report from ballistics. It's the same gun. What's he doing up here? He's probably on vacation. Poor Dorcas. All those children are orphans. Were there any clues? Some kids driving home from a dance saw her body in the middle of the road. And that's all we have. Well, that's not true. We do have something else. I received a note from him the other day. You did, John? It's been printed that I'm in charge of the investigation, so the killer looks at me as his... I guess you could say opponent or antagonist. Oh, what does the note say? It fits in with thou shalt kill. He writes, why then is it a crime to kill? Yes, why? On the contrary, it is the law of nature. And? Then that's all. That's all he wrote. There's no way to trace the writing or, or the paper? No, I'm afraid not. What's, what's your theory on this thing, Judge? You're dealing with a madman. Oh, we know that going in. He suffers from one of the uh, forms of amnesia. He obviously has periods in which he disassociates himself from the world of reality and wanders off into a, another world of illusion. Or perhaps what we call the world of illusion is for him the world of reality. That's true. Uh, I had uh, forgotten for a moment you were a teacher of psychology. I didn't teach psychology. I taught literature. Ah, forgive me, Mrs. Mullins. Actually... Psychology is derived from literature. You got us started, Judge. The psychologists stole everything from the writers. Well, after all, the Oedipus Complex was discovered not by a psychiatrist, but by a playwright. Oh, Martha. Uh, how did it feel to grow up with such a smart <laughs> sister, <laughs> Lieutenant? If I were smart, I'd have chosen a profession that paid me a decent pension, so I wouldn't have to spend my so-called golden years as a housekeeper for a man who insists on digging his grave with his teeth. She really is a delightful lady, Lieutenant. <laughs> All right, now that message he sent. You say that again, John. Um, why then is it a crime to kill? Yes, why? On the contrary, it's the law of nature. That's it, John. No, uh -huh. yes. Uh, precisely the way it was put. I memorized it word for word, Martha. Are you sure he wrote why then is it a crime to kill, not why is it a crime to kill? I mean, you're sure about the word then? Positive. Is there a point to this, Miss Vaughan? Yes, there's a literary feel to it. Well, the, the killer could very well be a literary person. You see, why is it a crime? I mean, that's a question anybody could ask. But why then is it a crime is obviously part of an argument. It's been lifted out of a context. He's quoting somebody. Who? I don't know, John. It's like a thought that has been developed by a novelist or a dramatist or an essayist. Well, is it familiar? Yes. I have a, f a feeling that I must have read it somewhere before. Martha, here's why I asked you down here. Another note came in the mail this morning. Here, read it. Every being has the mission to kill. He kills to live, and he lives to kill. 
John, he's quoting somebody. I mean, this is familiar. What is it? I've read it. I know I've read it. Where? A long time ago. Why then is it a crime to kill? Yes. Why? On the contrary, it is the law of nature. Now, that's the first note he sent to you. Yeah, that's right. And now the second note. Every being has the mission to kill. He kills to live, and he lives to kill. Fits together. It follows. It flows. It, it's part of the same Okay, sentiment. okay, okay. I buy it. Now, who wrote it? Mission, kill, nature, crime. Those are the four key words. Well, maybe the killer wrote it all himself. Oh, no, I don't think so. Why not? Why not? Well, I suppose I was going to say that the writing is too polished, too poetic, too classic to be the work of some mad killer, but that's not the real reason. Tell me the real reason. It's too familiar. I know that I've read it somewhere before. But can you try to remember? <laughs> you know what the trouble is, John. Some people haven't read enough. And I, on the other hand, have read too much. Do you think you'll send us another note? I don't know. The medics have given us a profile on this guy. Shy, repressed, quiet. Maybe lives with his mother. Definitely not married. In fact, they all seem to agree he somehow doesn't make it with women. Well, what's your opinion? I don't know. Anybody can be a killer. Well, of course, that's true theoretically. It's true practically, too. We used to think people had problems because they didn't have money. Look at all these kids we keep arresting. So many of them have all the money they could ever spend. Maybe they didn't have love. Okay. So anybody could be deprived of love. So anybody could be the mad killer. Anybody? Don't, don't search for the obvious nut, for the funny-looking eccentric. As it says, he may be walking among us. Oh, well, the identity is hidden somewhere in those notes. The ones that say, thou shalt kill, which he leaves on his victims, and the ones he just sent to you. You know, you know what I'm thinking? Even if we could find out where he got those quotations, what would it tell us? Well, what would it tell us? It would just tell us what books he reads. Oh, John, that could tell us everything. <laughs> Uh, take me to 18 Marcy, please. 1 8 Marcy, right. Music bother you, sir? No, 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 not at all. Some people don't like it, but you know, they're too timid. Is that it? Yeah. They're timid. They're, they're just too timid to say, driver, turn it off. So they sit there and they have a miserable ride. Yeah. I'm, I'm having a very pleasant ride, thank you. Um, are you going to ask me the question? The question? I get it every time. What's a good-looking girl like you doing driving a cab? Uh, uh, what are you doing driving a cab? Making a living. Is it a good living? Oh, I don't complain. If I did, who would listen? You're driving a cab. What do you want to do? Ah, uh, no, I'm an actress. Oh. And I'm, as they say, at liberty. I understand. And this beats waiting on table. I imagine it would. And it leaves the days free for making rounds. Rounds? Knocking on producers' doors. Oh. Oh, I see. You know, you're one of the very few people who didn't pop off at me at being a lady cab driver. Well, you must admit it's kind of a novelty. Oh, not all that much of a novelty anymore. You know... <laughs> You think that there's some kind of law that says that... Uh, law? A law that says that only men can drive cabs. Well, I understand there used to be such a law. Women couldn't get a hack license. But it's been repealed. There's only one law. Or maybe it hasn't been repealed. It's just nobody pays any attention to it anymore. There's the basic law of nature. You'd be surprised how many laws they still have on the books that nobody knows about. The law that cannot be denied. And that nobody even tries to enforce. This law must be enforced. For example, I know for a fact we have a law that says you can't lead a white horse through the street on Sunday. Uh, uh, stop for a moment. <laughs> no one's going to lead a white horse. Young lady. I said, stop for a moment. Yes, sir. Uh, is something... No, 
Seems amiss, Mrs. Mullins. You've been out. I, I suppose you haven't heard the news. News? Oh, obviously you haven't. The killer. The mad killer, the mysterious killer, whomever, whatever, has claimed another victim. When did this happen? I heard it on the news just a few hours ago. His, uh, his seventh victim, I believe. This thing has gone too far. Something will have to be done. Yes, sir. Who was it this time? The girl's name was Julia Tate. She was an actress. Actress? Yes, but she was moonlighting as a cab driver. No. Now, that is a shame. The girl probably spends the whole day looking for work in the theater. Then at night, she takes on this difficult and hazardous job driving a cab. Yes, they found the usual note. Thou shalt kill. I'm sure they'll find it was done with the usual 22 caliber gun. I'm sure that somewhere he left something behind that must incriminate him. Yes, sir, but the problem is to find it. And as my brother, Lieutenant Altman, would say, to know what it is when you do find it. I'll answer it, sir. Judge Roberts, resident. Oh, yes, John, wait a minute. Yes, I'll write it down. It's Lieutenant Altman. He's just received another note from the killer. All right, John, I'm ready. Man kills. Yes, without ceasing to nourish himself. Mm. But since, in addition, he needs to kill for pleasure, it is not enough to kill beasts. He must kill man, too. Mm -hmm. Long ago, this need was satisfied by human sacrifice. Now, the necessity of modern society has made murder a crime. Is that all, John? Yes, yes, it flows. It has to be part of the same thought, part of the same piece. Let me try to remember some things, John. Yes, right. Goodbye. Am I to understand the killer has been sending more notes to the police? Yes, he, he, he seems to be expressing quite a philosophy of life, or I should say, death. I hope he puts a stop to it before long. People will soon be too terrified to walk the streets. Where have I heard those words before? Where have I read them? I, I know it's familiar. It, it, it's on the tip of my tongue, too. Uh, Ms. Mullins, I've had a rather strenuous walk this evening. But you're required to. That's doctor's orders. It uh, made me hungry. I was uh, <laughs> thinking of a little snack. That, sir, is out of the question. Why? Well, you defeat the purpose of exercise if you eat back all the weight you've just walked off. But walking makes me ravenously hungry. That, sir, is your problem. Uh, you know, Martha Mullins, there are times when I could kill you. <laughs> Let's drop the curtain right now. We'll never get a better line than that one. Talk about your double entendre. You get it tripled right here. Well, now, what does he mean? Of course, I'll kill you is often used as an epithet, but usually by those who have no intention of doing it. Here, we're dealing with a man who has already killed seven people. What's another one, more or less? We'll have the grand total ready to add up in Act Three. No man, we are told, is a hero to his valet. This does not mean, however, that he cannot serve in that capacity to his housekeeper. Judge James Marshall Wilmot is certainly cast in the heroic mold. He is tall, imposing, brilliant, famous. Of course, he has a bit of a problem. But so far, only you and I are aware of it. John, I know I've read those words in the notes somewhere before. But where? Think. Well, I said it was written in a classic style. Who wrote it? Well, it has to be a, a classic author. Although... Although what? Although it could be modern, too. Oh, somewhere, somehow, sometime, there has to be a break in this thing. 
Why can't it be now? Police. Yes. Where are you? What's your name? Uh-huh. No, 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 don't be afraid. Just tell us. Where? No, no, don't do anything. If he goes away, forget it. Don't you try to follow him. Right. What is it, John? Jerry, we could have something. A woman is looking at a guy sitting on a park bench across the street from her window at number 51 Baker. You got that? Throw a circle around it right now. I'll be there in three minutes. Guy fits the description. Yeah, fast, but no sirens. Oh, John, let me come with you. Now, Martha. John, you know there won't be any danger. In 30 seconds, there's going to be an entire army of the police. All units, suspect still reported to be on the bench. Do nothing to alarm him. Make no aggressive moves. Just stand by. I will make the approach. Jerry and Hart ready for backup. Over. Martha, he can't get away. He's got no place to go. He's surrounded, cut off. Oh, if he's the killer, do we have this guy? Can we be this lucky? John, I think I think something has just clicked into place about those notes. They don't matter anymore if we have the killer. I think I'm getting close. Got a hunch we've nailed him. Finally. I better calm down. I'm getting too excited. But I want this guy so badly. John, did you ever have something just at the top of your subconscious that's trying to surface? Ah, here's where the park begins. Baker Place. And here are the benches. A hundred yards ahead. Big guy is sitting there. John. Yeah, he's wearing that black raincoat John, and that black mustache. All units, stand by. Jerry, Art, start walking across the street. Get on either side of him. Slowly. But John, that's... Perkins, Rossi, pull up, park. But John, it isn't the killer. Now, we'll take him. John, that's Judge Wilmot. Look, can't you see? Hmm? It's the judge. All units. False alarm. He's not our man. Let's go home. You can't be serious, Miss Mullins. Yes, 20 police officers. We're about to pounce on you, Judge Wilmot. But whatever for? Oh, Judge, I keep telling you, you fit the description of the killer. Nonsense. But it's the only description that exists. You're a big man. You have a black mustache. You wear a black raincoat. I can't do anything about my size, although, uh, goodness knows on your diet, I'm sure to shrink down to nothing. You could shave off that mustache. Uh, this mustache, Mrs. Mullins, is 35 years old. And get rid of that raincoat. I happen to fancy black. It's a fitting color for a judge. All right, don't say I didn't warn you. About what? There are nervous people in this town. Somebody might take a shot at you by mistake. Well, I should hope so. I would hate to think anyone would want to shoot me on purpose. No, seriously, Judge. You live in a world of your own. I deny that. It's true. You see, judges have the power the rest of us don't. They have the power to judge. Everyone has the power to judge. Yes, but only a judge has power in his judgments. Very well put. You tend to lose sight of the problems of ordinary people because you're not an ordinary person. I feel quite ordinary. Oh, no, you don't. You flaunt your own personal attitude of freedom. <laughs> a vicious, sought-after killer dresses exactly as you do, wears a mustache like you do. And you recognize the fact that it's dangerous to walk around looking the way you do. Are you deliberately provoking the police? There is no psychiatrist like the amateur psychiatrist. And another thing, Judge, I also know something the police don't. You have a twenty-two caliber pistol. Are, are you saying that I'm the killer? You're amused. Can't we be serious? Uh, right now, I believe I would like to take a walk. In the streets? At night? With a jumpy public and maybe some quick-on-the-trigger characters all over the town? Uh, one thing you should know, Mrs. Mullins. When I get the urge to take a walk, or something equally salubrious, I give in to it. Please be careful. Why am I required to be careful? Lieutenant Altman. Yes, Inspector. I know. I've just been through with the media. I know your problem. I know the mayor's problem. I know eight people are dead. And we're still on square one, ground zero. 
Why shouldn't I lose my temper? Everyone else has. Do you want my badge? You can have it. I'll quit. Just tell me what you want me to do. Well, that's exactly what I am doing, the best I can. Yes, sir. And what do you want? You asked me to come down and see you, John. Oh, Martha, come on in. Sit down, sit down. Ah, oh, you don't know what it's been like. What do you want to see me about? Another note from the killer. Ned, what do you make of this? We condemn and punish the assassin, but as we cannot live without yielding to this natural and imperious instinct of death, we relieve ourselves from time to time by wars. What do you make of it? I know this. I know this passage. I even remember the rest of it. Um, it goes, Then a whole nation slaughters another nation. And do we despise those selected to commit this wholesale murder? No. They are loaded with honors. They are given rewards and titles. They are proud, respected, loved by women, cheered by the crowd. Oh, I remember it. I remember it. It's a, it's a story. Well, no, it's, it's not exactly a story. Well, what is it? Well, maybe it is a story of some kind. It's a... Oh, of course. Guy de Maupassant. All right. All right. Well, what it's about called, it? Uh, it's called... Wait a minute. Oh, so many years ago, I was still at college. Uh, Diary of a Madman. Okay. We know that our killer has read a story. It's more of a, a fragment. Whatever of... it is. By de Maupassant. Yes. We know now that he uses parts of the story in his notes to the police. I remember them. These are word-for-word -word quotes. Okay. Now what? I've been in a sweat to find out where he got that language from. Now that I've got it, I really don't know what to do with it. <sighs> oh, good Lord. What is it, Martha? I know who the killer is. You do? How? Well, tell me. I know who the killer is because I just happened to remember who the central character in Dire of a Madman was. Now, 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 Mrs. Mullins, what is this? It's dinner, Your Honor. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a mirage. It's a highly edible mirage, then. Hey, you have food on the table this evening. Not, not merely some tasteless, desiccated form of grass. It may have been a form of grass, but it was neither tasteless nor desiccated. Meat, potatoes, gravy, pie. What is this? A hearty meal. You're entitled to one. I should say so. Well, this is a treat. Uh, uh, pardon me while I fall to. <laughs> the judge... In your library, you have the works of de Maupassant. And also Balzac and Stendhal and Anatole France. Ah, uh, those are the writers. But, Judge, are you familiar with a, a de Maupassant story? The diary of a madman? Hmm. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think so. Well, what's it about? It's a, mm. a diary of a madman who happens to be a judge. Oh. No, the bench is filled with mad judges. Mm, this judge is a homicidal maniac. Oh, no, 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 Miss Mullins, that's going a bit far. Yes, he's obsessed with the idea of killing. He sees it as a beautiful, natural act. No, no, that's a bit far-fetched. And because of his august position, he is, of course, above suspicion. Never read it. It isn't in the least familiar. Oh, hmm. What divine spices did you put into this meat sauce? The mad killer who's terrorizing our city. Must we talk about him now? Those notes that he's been writing to the police. Uh, Mrs. Mullins, not while we're eating. Those notes are taken verbatim from the de Maupassant story. And these potatoes are superb. I have this book from your library with the story in it. Hmm? Oh. I must make a note to read it sometime. You have read it, Judge. What? Um, uh, what are you saying, Miss Bond? Don't you see in the story you've underlined the very words? Yes, and here in the margin, your comments. How true, how perceptive. That's your handwriting. I don't, uh, I don't understand. I, I, 
I, I, have, I have no recollection of... Judge Wilmot, you are the mad killer. Uh, Mrs. Mullins, this is a... A monstrous accusation. Your 22 pistol could prove it. Ballistics will show that it's the murder weapon. Where is the pistol? You are actually accusing me of, 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 of being this loathsome killer? On what evidence? The pistol could prove it. What pistol? All right. You got rid of it. You're guilty. No. Why? Why did you read that story and become inflamed by it? Uh, I don't even remember reading it. You don't remember reading To Kill is the Law Because Nature Loves Eternal Youth? The Law. Oh, yes. Right, right. The, the Law. Uh, now I, I know what you're talking about. The Law. There is nothing more beautiful and honorable than killing. Where is the gun, Judge? We must kill in order to live, to satisfy the stomach hunger uh, uh. and the blood lust. Uh, 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 judge, let's go over. Judge! What? What? Judge, it's me, Lieutenant Alban. Judge! Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Mullins, I, 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 I don't, I, I don't know what I'm doing. What, what was I trying to do to you? This is, this is, this is most embarrassing. You'll have to come along with us, Judge. Uh, what? Uh, uh, come along where? Oh, 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 what for? But I, I, I think all of you owe me an explanation. But I shall not listen to it on an empty stomach. Uh, John, why don't we explain things to the judge? over dinner. How do you explain to Dr. Jekyll that he's also Mr. Hyde? I don't know how the explanation went. However, I do know that when dinner was over, everybody in the room went down to police headquarters. The mad killer is caught, and the city is tranquil once again, and shall remain so until next time. The inspiration for our story was the celebrated Diary of a Madman by Guy de Maupassant. Although this title refers to just one small sample of his writings, it is most revealing, since the entire body of de Maupassant's work can be called the Diary of a Madman. He himself went mad. Each day, in numerous and subtle ways, his madness became more intense. And each day he wrote and wrote some of the greatest short stories in the world. Were they great because he was mad? Or did they drive him mad because they were great? Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Marion Seldes, Martha Greenhouse, and Matt Poland. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. For another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams.